Austin, Texas, and I had to go from Austin, Texas to Hallettsville, Texas. So I looked it up on the uh, Google Maps, and I found out that the best route to get there was about 116 miles. And the highways were allowing me to cruise at about 69 miles per hour, and that was within the speed limit. So what we're going to do is calculate the approximate time it will take me to travel that distance of 116 uh, miles at 69 miles per hour. Our formula is rate times time equals distance. And what we need to do is solve that formula for time. So we solve for t. Divide both sides by r. Simplify by canceling the r's and rewriting it as time equals distance divided by rate. So I'm now going to my spreadsheet and we're going to first of all bring some information over. The first thing I did was save my spreadsheet and now I'm going back and copying some information over to my spreadsheet. So I'm doing a screenshot to the clipboard of my formula. Coming back in Excel and pasting it. And I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And then I also had some information and I'm going to bring that back. And screenshot to the clipboard of that section. And of course that's my phone ringing in the background, but I'm going to continue with my work. Okay, so we're going to set this up and the first thing we're going to do is put in our distance and that's going to be in miles in our rate and that's going to be in miles per hour and we're going to use Excel to calculate the time and that's going to be in hours initially so this is a fairly simple straightforward formula but what we want to do instead of just working out one time we want to allow it uh, the flexibility that if we change our distance or our rate it would recalculate and give us the new value for time. So I'm going to put in 116 for the uh, distance and 69 for the current rate. So using my formula in the next cell I'm going to put in equals I'm going to click on the cell that contains the distance 116 divided by, I'm going to click on the cell that contains the rate of speed, 69, and press return. Now the advantage of the setting it up this way is if we would have to go on a different trip and it was 320 miles at that speed, we would have it recalculate automatically to the new time. If we change our speed to 55 miles per hour, again, it's going to recalculate the time. Going back and putting in my original values. Now, what we're going to do is uh, take this time in hours and change it to hours and minutes by using a function. So I'm going to put in hours. And over here, I'm going to put in a function. I'm going to use the int function. So I type in int and open a parenthesis. As soon as I do that, it's telling me I need to put a number in there. Well, this function, uh, for positive numbers, you can think of it as just throwing away the part to the right of the decimal. Uh, it really rounds down to the integer below it. And so 1.68 would be rounded down to 1. So instead of typing the number in, I'm going to click on the cell and close my parentheses. 
all right, to now figure out the minutes because typically 0.68 of an hour isn't going to make uh, that much sense. We're going to calculate the minutes. All right, to calculate the minutes, we're going to use a formula. And what we're going to do is start with equals. And we're going to open a parentheses. And we're going to take our original time and here it's 1.68 but I'm clicking on it and I'm going to subtract the part to the left of the decimal which is in this cell close my parentheses when I do that I'm going to get the decimal part of an hour and we know that there are 60 minutes in an hour so if I take that decimal part of an hour and multiply it by 60 I will get the number of minutes. All right, so this is about one hour and 41 minutes. All right, so we now know our approximate drive time.